We have Adam Lean with us from the CFO Project. Adam, say hi. Hey, everybody. Adam is, again... the CFO project that is, and he is a former accountant who turned two-time entrepreneur. Let's talk about that a little bit in a second, Adam, who <laughs> built, scaled, and sold two businesses while helping other business owners. He realized his passion was teaching and providing tools to people that own businesses to help them make more money and have peace of mind. And so Adam, welcome. We're so glad to have you. And I think this is going to be a really fun conversation. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I've actually heard Adam speak in person at an event that he and I both were speaking at. It was GrowCon with Universal Accounting, Roger Connect. Shout out to Roger. Thanks for having us both out there. And so I've heard Adam speak and we probably won't hear all of the juicy stuff that he can do for you today, but we <laughs> want to just kind of today to give you guys a little agenda. If you're looking to make a transition to do advisory services more, find a new service offering to maybe do more high leverage work, high value work to reinvent your firm or practice, make the evolution. That's a lot of the umbrella we'll talk around, but I want to start Adam with just hearing kind of your story. Tell me more about how the CFO project came about. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's a fascinating story because it really, I didn't set out to, to create something like the CFO project. It just happened because people were asking for it. And here's what I mean by that. I used to be, I graduated college with an accounting degree. So I thought, well, I'll become an accountant. And I did that at, and I enjoyed where I worked as an accountant. I really didn't enjoy accounting. <laughs> the idea of sitting there and just recording the past. That was, it, it just wasn't fascinating to me. I, what was fascinating was actually getting involved in the business and helping the business grow and using my financial background to understand if we improve these dials, if we change these things, it's going to help the business grow. And that's what I really liked. And so I moved, ended up moving to Atlanta for my accounting job. And I didn't really know anybody in Atlanta. And this is back in 2005 and I had all this free time. So I thought, let me start a business, my own business. And so I started a business at nights and on the weekends. And it was an e-commerce store. And this was way before Shopify existed or all these right. other platforms where you could start an e-commerce business. I literally actually ordered, mail ordered a, a software, a shopping cart software. They sent wow. me several CDs <laughs> and a giant 300 page booklet on how to build this shopping cart software. But I loved just getting my hands dirty and building this thing. And, and I'll never forget, I was driving home from my accounting job one day and I had a Blackberry. And you know, the Blackberries, they used to, when you got an email message, it was like red light that flashed. So I was getting off the off ramp to my neighborhood and the light flashed. And I looked at it. I was at the red light. I looked at it and it was my first order. Oh for, man. And it, I, that was like the best feeling in the world. It's like, ah, oh, I didn't really have to do, I did a lot to get that first order, but I didn't have to talk to the customer. <laughs> it was just a fascinating yeah. experience. And so I did whatever I could to build my e-commerce store at nights and on the weekends outside, outside of my job. Well, within fast forward to two years, I was doing close to seven figures in revenue with my e-commerce store. Wow. So I let me devote full time to this. So I quit my day job and I devoted full time to this and I built the business enough. I mean, I struggled a lot, don't get me wrong, but because of my numbers background, I understood what drivers, what levers I needed to pull in order to build a profitable business from that. Other people in the e-commerce world, other business owners, I started asking me for help. And so I realized, I quickly realized that these people, I, let me back up. I quickly realized that I took for granted that I understood numbers and these right. people didn't. Most business owners that I've con came in contact with, they didn't understand numbers at all, but I did because of my accounting background. Mm. And so I started helping them and that mm. morphed into what's now we call a productized CFO service. The idea is that I started helping them, but quickly realized I didn't want another part-time job to help them. So I built this sort of system to mm -hmm. help them improve revenue, profit, and cash flow. Mm -hmm. They loved it because they didn't have to think like an accountant. They could think mm -hmm. like a business owner. And now all of a sudden they understood their numbers. They know what to do about it and they could improve their business. They knew they had a plan each month. And then they had somebody, which was me, 
right. to lean on for support. And so that turned into sort of a what I call a product as CFO service. And then fast forward several years, I met my now co-founder of the CFO project. His name's Jeff. We started talking and he was doing something similar with his clients. So he was an accountant turned business owner as well. And he started helping his clients and he had a very similar system. So we compared notes and realized that if we combined forces, we would have something powerful here. So that's what we did. We combined forces, built a CFO, outsourced CFO firm for business owners. And then Christian, we got to, we, we built this up and up and we got to capacity fairly quickly. We couldn't take on any more clients. So then our nat next natural step was let's hire CFOs for our team hmm. doing that and realized that the type of person that we wanted to work with small, medium-sized business owners wasn't employee material. They were entrepreneurs. They were, we wanted accountants that were entrepreneurial minded that wanted to scale their own business. So we thought instead of hiring employees, let's create a membership program where we'll train accountants and qualified bookkeepers and CPAs and enrolled agents and financial professionals on our program, on our on how we deliver a CF a productized CFO service. And and we started pitching that to other accountants we knew. And that they said yes. And now 400 members later, we have a the CFO project where we train business bookkeepers, accountants, CPAs, enrolled agents on how to offer a CFO service without feeling like a part-time job and how to get leads and sell those leads on a CFO service without feeling like a salesperson. So mm. that's a little bit of my background. <laughs> I love that, man. That's so great. And I actually didn't know some of that story, Adam. So I'm glad to hear it from you directly. And what a fun journey you've been on. And I hope that if you're a listener, that if you weren't leaned in, now you are, because a lot <laughs> of the folks that we work with are actually trying to crack that nut of how do I transform my business without sabotaging myself, my time, my oh. existing workload in a sustainable, scalable way. So this is a really fun conversation for us to have. Well, let's get into some of the tactics or some of the strategies that you are developing. And Adam, our first talking point here is helping our audience know. What does a business owner really want? What are they expecting from an accountant or a bookkeeper? Tell us about that. Yeah, and I'm glad you asked that question because I think a lot of accountants are struggling to grow and they're struggling to, to get, they're struggling to grow because it's hard to make more money from their existing clients. And the accountants, most accountants do a really good job at what they do, which is to record the past, which is to do taxes or do bookkeeping, whatever the case may be. But here's the problem. It's hard to get a, your clients to get excited about what you do because at the end of the day, on the giant list of things that business owners have to worry about, accounting and taxes and bookkeeper, bookkeeping fall very, very close to the bottom. Most mm -hmm. business owners aren't lying awake at night thinking, oh man, I can't wait till I talk to my bookkeeper next, or I can't wait till I talk to my accountant next. They're lying awake at night thinking, how am I going to meet payroll? Or should I have hired that person I hired today? Can I afford to buy a truck? I really need to buy more inventory. I don't know where the cash is going to come from. Or can I afford to buy this, uh, to open a second location? Should I raise my prices? If so, to what? These are questions that they're asking to themselves or to their employees or to their friends or to their spouse. But they really want to ask those questions to the one person in their lives that they already trust with their numbers, and that's to their accountant. And the problem though, is that most accountants are buried knee deep in taxes and compliance work and doing the books. They don't have time to help the business owner answer all those questions that they really care about. And therefore there's a big disconnect. The accountant doesn't have time to help the accountant, the bookkeeper, the accountant doesn't have time to help the business owner and so the business owner is left confused about who to go to for help. And they end up going to their friends or their employees or their, you know, their spouse for questions or end up not really doing anything. And they're not improving their business. Meanwhile, the accountant, because they're buried in this like, compliance work, they're not able to raise their prices because they're not offering something of value that their clients really want. And so everybody's stuck. 
Mm -hmm. So that's what, to answer your question, that's really what your clients want. They want from you to, they want you to be someone that they can trust to just tell them what to do to have a more profitable business, to have a successful business. They want you, their financial professional, to tell them how to do that. Yeah. Oh, that makes a ton of sense. And especially what we say about marketing that what you just said jives really well with is that all of marketing is about actually building relationships, relationships of trust. And that's something that we try and do for our clients in a variety of ways, but you get a seat. I think there's two ways to think about it. There's like a manipulative, something to leverage. Okay, that's kind of true. But also if you have someone that you're serving and you have a service mentality and you're providing a ton of value, this is indeed the next wave of areas you could help with. And you are the person that could probably speak most clearly into this for a business owner. And I think also, Adam, I can just pick this up from you. It's fun, isn't it? I mean, isn't this yes. fun to get to play that strategy role? Absolutely. You get to have a big impact on your client's lives because the, the your client's businesses are not hobbies for them. This is their livelihood. This is how they put food on the table. This is how they pay their employees to put food on their employees' table. This business has to work. And so if you, you're the financial person in their lives come along and said, Hey, I can help you improve the profitability and cash flow. I can turn your business into a machine that you own instead of a stressful, low paying job that, that you own. <laughs> They're going to say, yes, tell me, I want that. Right. right. Oh, I love that. Tell me about the timeliness of this for our industry, Adam. Like, is this the unique moment in time to start moving towards services like this? Yeah, I think yes, for a couple of reasons. One, most, and if you think about it, most businesses in, in the country, probably the world are, are small. We've read a lot of industry specific data on this. 99% of businesses in the United States alone are considered small, mm -hmm. which means mm -hmm. they don't have somebody like a CFO, a large leadership team that's guiding them. They don't have influx of cash. Think about Uber. They've yet to make a profit. But they're still in business after almost a decade for one reason. And that's because they have cash from investors. Well, right. most business owners, 99%, in fact, don't have cash coming in from investors. If their business is not making money, the cash can really come under come from two sources, debt or their owner's personal savings. Neither one are great to keep the business alive. So what right. the business owner really needs is somebody that can guide them towards creating cash from operations, from the business itself. And that's the well-suited, the best suited person for that is an accountant who, because the accountant understands the numbers. There's a lot of business coaches and consultants out there and that, that provide this type of business advisory service. But the problem is they, and I know I'm generalizing here, there's probably some good advisors but they're usually expensive. Mo the vast majority of these so-called consultants um, are advising their clients on things to do without considering the impact of cash flow because they don't know how to measure the impact of cash flow because they're not financial people. Mm -hmm. And so the best person to give advice is somebody that already understands cash flow. They just need to know how to give advice, which is what we do in our program. We teach accountants how to give advice, how to be a CFO and offer business advisory services. But most businesses are small and they need somebody. And at the same time, you asked about why now, why now is the best time. You know, they're predicting that with AI and all this artificial intelligence and whatnot, they're going to do a lot of 90% of what accountants do today is going to be replaced probably in 10 years by AI. There's software and other tech companies that build themselves as tech companies, but all they are really off, offshore accounting firms that are trying to automate you know, a lot of the job of an accountant or a bookkeeper. And that's not good. QuickBooks is literally competing with most bookkeepers, all bookkeepers today by offering their live bookkeeping service. But the one thing that cannot be replaced is like you talked about earlier, a relationship. And a rela oh. if you have a relationship and they trust you, most business owners would rather you tell them what to do to have a more profitable business. And if you could do that, you can also sell your bookkeeping, your tax, whatever accounting services 
but you have to have that trusted relationship. Yeah, yeah. Well, and this feels like a 360 degree way to be able to address and approach a business. So if you have a lead coming through, you're not just like you've talked about, talking about the past, what's happened for you, let's get you compliant and get yeah. your ducks. You can come in with such a compelling, persuasive pitch of I am going to do both. I am going to help you look back and it's going to be also an orientation of how we move forward. And those things probably go back and forth, right? Like what happened in the past can influence what we can oh, do in the future and what you want to do in the future can start to influence what it hits your rear view mirror of things that you want to change. And so that does feel like, especially sales, which is something that everyone, not everyone, but most people struggle with that to me just rings of, well, that's a great selling proposition to bring to the table of I am unique in this way. Um, and if you do it that way, you don't even have to sell. <laughs> you're just helping. And because your clients want the help, it, the sale will happen. It right. just it predicates, it's predicated on a relationship. Right. And also think about the fact that according to the SBA, half of all businesses fail before they reach their fifth birthday. Mm. 80 something percent fail before they reach their 10th birthday but think about that most businesses fail they all had accountants they all had bookkeepers most likely so that in and of itself is not the predictor of success having somebody that they can lean on that they can trust to guide them on how to have a successful business is needed if not more than just bookkeeping tax services yeah Oh, that's fascinating. I love all this. Okay, Adam. So who or how can you determine if you're listening to this right now and you're not currently offering the services, how do you know if you're qualified to take a step towards this? Yeah, we get that question a lot because a lot of people, a lot of accountants out there, a lot of bookkeepers think I'm not qualified to be a CFO. Here's the thing. You may not be qualified to be the CFO for Coca-Cola, <laughs> a multi-international billion dollar right. organization, but 99%, like I talked about, businesses are small. Most businesses are small. They don't have somebody that can help them. So it's not like the person that owns a $4 million construction company is deciding between you and deciding between the CFO of Coca-Cola to hire. <laughs> They're not. They're deciding between you and nothing. Right. So something is better than nothing. Now, you are more qualified than you think. There, we look for three qualifications. One, do you actually care? Because it requires you to actually have a desire to help business owners. You have to be somebody. Because at the end of the day, you're meeting when you're meeting with your clients, they're talking with you. They're, you're not just sending them a bunch of reports. And when they're talking to you, you have to show that empathy. You have to care. And if you could do that, then you're way more qualified than a lot of people. Why is that? Because if, you're, if there's two CFOs helping a client, one CFO is not as qualified as the other CFO, but if that one CFO who's not as qualified can actually help a business owner, get a business owner to actually take action and inspire them to accomplish certain things in their business they need to do to improve revenue, profit, and cash flow. If that less qualified CFO can get a business owner to take action, over a more qualified CFO, then that unqualified CFO is going to succeed, whereas the qualified CFO is going to fail every single day. Because mm. you you can have all the credentials next to your name, but if you can't get a business owner to take action, then you will fail as a CFO or business advisor. And so you have more qualifications than you think in this field, because it's not all about tactics. It's a lot of it's psychological. A lot of it's showing empathy. A lot of it is being able to talk to your clients in such a way to get them to take action. And that's a lot of what we teach in this program. Um, so if I've like sorry. been good about getting documents from difficult procrastinator clients. And I've found success as a tax or accounting professional and from a compliance perspective, just wrangling people to get information from them and pulling that out. Maybe that's a transferable skill to be maybe. able to Absolutely. just say, maybe <laughs> you guys have more soft skills than you think in terms of helping people take steps that they need to. It's obviously different, but that just came to mind of, yeah, totally. maybe don't sell yourself short if you feel a little unqualified. And I think, again, what Adam is saying here is you're probably already more qualified than you think. And it is not a competition of you against 10 other folks. It's a competition of 
probably, and I mean, Adam, this isn't a question we have, but maybe you've already mentioned it, but I haven't heard it yet or I don't remember. How many businesses, small businesses, employ a CFO? How many, you know, maybe it's just like we don't know, so we can't say, but I'd imagine, again, there's an accountant, there's a bookkeeper, there's a tax person involved, obviously, for all businesses that are being run properly. That being said, like, this is a massive area of value totally. that could help people stave off the death that most businesses experience. Absolutely. Not that many businesses employ CFOs, small businesses especially, small to medium-sized businesses. Not many employ CFOs. If they do, if it's a full-time CFO, 80% of the time in our experience, that CFO is not really a CFO in, in our definition. They are really the head accountant or the comptroller. And they just happen to call them CSO, CFOs because there's a CMO and there's a CEO and there's a COO. Well, our numbers person, let's make them the CFO. And then, yeah. and these people don't understand that a CFO's job is not just to be the head accountant, not to be the chief numbers person. It's to be the person that can understand the numbers. They don't have to prepare them themselves. They just have to understand the numbers and be able to guide the leadership team on what to do to improve the numbers. To not only to not only not to not only not fail, but to have a growing and more profitable and business. And the chief metric, the number one metric that defines a successful CFO is somebody that can help the business create more cash flow on a consistent basis. Somebody that can create more positive cash flow on a consistent basis. That is the number one metric that if you define a successful business, it's a business that's producing more positive cash flow on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the CFO is ultimately responsible for. Oh, I love that. That's a great definition. I haven't heard said it that way before. Uh, man, this is gold, Adam. We're hitting a lot of good stuff. We got a couple more minutes. And so we might need to do part two, but I want to hit at least one more question. Although I think we only have a couple left. Okay. okay. So I'm doing this thing, right? And the, or maybe I'm starting to talk with you. I'm starting to put this on that I'm going to add this to my tool belt in my practice. How much am I charging? For this? What does this bring in oh, for me? Great question. We recommend because we, let me back up. We recommend that you charge a flat monthly fee for a CFO or business advisory service. And by the way, you don't have to call yourself a CFO if you don't want to. You can call yourself an accountant that does business advisory services. But for that, for offering this service, you want to charge for your value, not your time. And we recommend that you charge no less than $1,500 a month. Most of the members in our program charge around $2,500 a month for the service, but it, mm. I've seen it range from anywhere from $500 to $5,000. It really depends on a few factors, the size of the business, your experience, a, a couple of things. But on average, if you're charging $2,500 a month, you heard me use the word product to CFO service, meaning we're, you're delivering a certain set of deliverables to your client each month. And that's a product means a product test service. You're delivering a product in the service form. And so you're charging for your value for that service, which is the benefit of being a service, but you're delivering it like a product. You don't have right. to reinvent the wheel every time you make a sale with a new client. You're delivering the same set of deliverables. So that's a product test CFO service. You're charging $25 a month. And because it's productized, you're only working about four hours per month per client. So if you do the math, $2,500 per client you know, at, that's at 12 months, you're earning 30 grand per client a year. So if you had 10 clients, that's 300 grand that you're making with just 10 clients and you're working 40 hours a month instead of a week for those 10 clients. Yeah. And imagine if I'm just half wrong, that's still 150 grand that you're making a year from your clients which the last time we checked, which was about three weeks ago, the average accountant in the United States makes $78,000 a year. So mm. 150 grand is double. It's not so a bad gig. Less not time. A bad gig. Exactly. More and you're having a major impact on your clients' lives. And that has to be something that is compelling. And money and time, hey, those are real variables. But impact. Yep. I feel like that's one thing that you've highlighted that I, you know, I would have expected, but maybe not as strong as you put it. I think that's one of the most compelling things that someone that's considering this, if you are also, and some people are motivated in different ways, that's totally fair. But if you're motivated around impact, which I think a lot of us are, just to what degree, what a fun way to not just feel like, even though it's work, and like Adam's saying, it's less work than you'd think, 
and it's scaled, right? There's a scalability to this that you're not just reinventing the wheel every time. But just, I mean, I'm assuming, Adam, a lot of your clients and your own experience, like people, clients being people in the CFO project, is there a difference in joy at the work they're doing as they get into this? Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. Because you're, you will, you see the immediate benefit to your clients because you're talking to them each month and you're, they're sharing with you their, their, their some details of their personal lives and their business lives that they're not going to share with anybody. And you can see the joy, the, in many cases, the tears. I had a client one time come to me during our monthly, he was one of my CFO clients. He came to me, he was probably in his early sixties and he was, he started tearing up. He says, I had just had to put a, I had to take out another mortgage. My wife doesn't even know. I don't need your help. And he ended up becoming a client. That's the, a very, very real impact that you can make right. because these people are struggling. Your clients, even though they own businesses, it's not a cake. It's not a, it's a, not a walk in the park. It's not a cakewalk. And we all know this because you know, everybody listening, if you own your own accounting practice, you're a business owner too. It's not easy. <laughs> and it's especially no. that easy for people that don't understand numbers. Oh yeah, totally. Man, I love this. I actually think we need to do part two sometime. <laughs> uh, Let's do last it. question, last one, and then we're going to figure out where we go from here to keep the conversation going with you if people would like to, but what's the most efficient way to provide these advisory services? Yes, I touched on that a little bit earlier, but we firmly believe that you need to offer a productized CFO service. And here's mm -hmm. what I mean by that. If you, a lot of outsourced CFOs or people that call themselves fractional CFOs, they'll take on a client, but then they'll actually be their CFO. And that means that they have to create a very customized engagement for their client because every business is different. Well, that mm -hmm. feels very quickly like a part-time job because it is. So right. now, if you have multiple part-time jobs, that's not scalable. That's very overwhelming. You are back into what we call the accountant's trap where you're trading time for money. And so that's not a great way to spend your life. And you're really, because you can't take on that many clients because you only have limited time, your impact is not as good. Instead, what we recommend is you charge or you have a, a system that we call a product test CS CFO service where you're doing the exact same steps with every client each month. They don't know that it's a system you do. And you're doing the exact same steps with each client. And because each business is different, it's the same steps fit nicely into, the, in, into each business that you're doing. And that way you can delegate some of the steps to someone on your team. You could batch mm -hmm. some of the steps. And then you're, it takes about four hours per month with your client for each client including the hour you spend on a call with your client. And we have, we teach this system. And that's what we do in our program. We teach the system, but we have actually a free training where we'll show you the system. And so if anybody's interested, they, we have a free training at the CFO project.com. Literally the very first thing it says is framework for offering a CFO service. Just click that and sign up at, at the CFO project.com. Yeah, we actually go through, we like to deliver so much value that way. It's a no brainer to sign on to our program. Oh, I love that. And that's a great segue as we wrap up, Adam. And we'll put that in the show notes for everyone, the link to go to for that free training, as well as the CFO project website, which is just in case you want to look at it right now and can't look at the show notes, it's the CFO project.com. We'll also have Adam's LinkedIn um, posted in the show notes and man, what a great conversation, Adam. That was really rich. And again, like this is timely. There's a lot of folks that we run into, some that don't become clients, but many that do that are all asking the same thing. I kind of want to get out of the compliance, just deluge of paperwork and process and feast and famine and frustration. And this is where, not exclusively, we got some people that go tax resolution, some people that go tax planning, which is in this a little bit right. But from an advisory service, CFO work and everything we've talked about today, I think this is going to serve our audience really well. So thank you for taking the time. We will certainly have to have you back or do a webinar together at some point in the future. And we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate it, Christian. Absolutely. Any parting thoughts from you before we sign off, Adam? No, it was a pleasure to be here. And as you can tell, I'm passionate about this stuff because I like helping business owners and, and all the financial professionals in our program, they're passionate about it as well. 
That's wonderful. And that does come through that you're passionate about this. And so let me just give you guys one more push. We like Adam and we like what he's doing. And if you are looking to go and make steps in this direction, it's a free conversation. And there's a lot of things he said today that are super valuable, but let me just endorse the value of getting a coach, of getting a mentor, whether it's your sales process, whether it's your services, whether it's systems and other things that you want to add in. You can do some of it yourself, but a lot of times in these new areas, it's really wise to go and just go to the person that's already figured it out and let them give you all the shortcuts in the playbook. And so Adam's got the playbook. Go get it from him. Get on his calendar. Him and Jeff would be glad to talk with you. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it there, Jeff. Thank you again. And uh, we'll look forward to having you on next time. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Christian. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll talk to you soon.